this is the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra World Timer and it is the best watch in Omega's current lineup but not only that this one is also really killing it in the price for value department. World Timer watches are usually pretty expensive something you would usually only be getting from high-end luxury watch manufacturers like Patek Philippe or Vacheron Constantin starting from at least I want to say 35,000 and up. You will be able to discover the most fascinating things about this watch by looking at its details and that is why for this video today I will be showing you 13 of its best features and explain to you what they mean and why they are so interesting as well as giving you my take on this very special Omega so let's get started. Let's begin with the case because there is already a lot to see here. In a good old Omega fashion, the finishing on this case is very detailed and so you can spot this slight dip or curve at the lugs, though it might not seem like a big deal. It is one of the main reasons for the natural and flowy look of the watch case, which balances out the entire silhouette of the watch. The bezel and the top side of the case are polished, whereas the sides have been sandblasted, which not only looks great, but also feels very smooth when putting it on. The second feature is the the size of the watch itself which might be something that could make or break this watch for some people to house all the complications needed for a world timer the case has to be big enough so for this one you are looking at a diameter of 42 millimeter with a height of 14.2 millimeter and a lug to lug of 50 millimeter so ideally you would need a bit of a bigger wrist to wear that watch comfortably do you see these teak design looking lines on the dial it is our feature number three which lets you know that this one belongs to omega's aquaterra line to show the aquatic roots of the watch omega likes to use this teak design to make it resemble the nice teak wood floor from a yacht on this watch omega has taken those lines and inflated them a bit to show the connection between you no know, the aquaterra line but also making it look like the lines of the world's time zones to match the theme of the watch. And so next up we are going to take a closer look at the 24 hour disc. It is actually made from glass and separated into two halves, one light blue and the other one dark blue. 12 hours on the light blue part represent the day, whereas the dark blue half stands for the night time. And that way you can immediately tell what is happening where in the world. Of course, this is not everything on this world timer. The next two features are about the special detail that is hiding behind the city names that circle around the watch dial. So for point number five, I would like to know whether you can spot which city is missing from the typical world time list of cities. Yup, it's Paris at the spot where you would usually expect to find Paris we can see the city named Bienne. This is not by mistake because Bienne or Biel which is the German word for it is the home of Omega and replaced Paris to represent a specific time zone. Definitely a very charming detail on something so technical. But wait there's more. <laughs> the cities are printed in multiple colors. If you look close enough you can see that London is printed in red. This one's probably the easiest to deduce as London is known for being the world's time capital. Being at the GMT plus a zero time zone which stands for Greenwich Mean Time but there are also cities printed and blue and silver so what's up with that? Basically every city you see printed on there in blue does not have daylight saving time which means that for every silver city you have to add an hour during summer as they do have daylight saving time. Let's move further into the center of the dial and look at the world right there. In the middle for point number seven, the incredible details of the map. As you can see, the world is laid flat on this dial and you can see all the tiny ups and downs marking mountain ranges, for example. Pretty cool to see how many details Omega managed to pack into such a small surface. They achieved this by making use of a laser and how that laser affects titanium as this world plate is made from it. Every tiny detail has been lasered into it and fun fact here, no coloring was needed as the colors you can see here stem from the natural chemical reaction with the titanium and the laser. And now that we are looking at the earth, some of you might be a bit confused about the, I don't know, let's say arrangement of it. It is a bit of an unusual display, but it actually makes a lot of sense as soon as you know why. So what we see here is a flattened and a bit stretched display of the Northern Hemisphere. That way, going from the dead center of this watch, you could draw an imaginary line that would run through the geographic location of the cities on this tiny map, and it would match up perfectly with the correct time zone on the dial, and they would also at the same time correctly mark the 24-hour time zones that way. Let's 
continue with point number nine though, because this one might be the only little drawback of this watch and for that we have to check out the crown. First of all, this one is a screw down crown and seals the case to a water resistance up to 150 meter. But unfortunately, it is also rather difficult to grip when you want to set the watch, which is especially annoying with a world timer. Anyways, let's move on and see what the movement has to offer that powers all this. Therefore, we have to say thank you to feature number 10, the exhibition case back. That way we can get an unobstructed look at the COSC and Meta certified movement of this watch, which sounds complicated, but basically just comes down to the following two things. First, this movement is basically anti-magnetic. Magnetic fields up to 15,000 gauss will not bother this movement, so you can pretty much wear it everywhere. And secondly, this watch runs with an accuracy of about zero to plus five seconds per day, or an accuracy of 99.9942%. For point number 11, we are going to stick with the backside of this watch because I want to point out the special type of Genevan stripes that decorate the movement. Most luxury watches have decorated movements, but it's a one of Omega's trademarks to put their own spin on the traditional stripes and bend them a little to give them this very special look. The second to last feature is something I guess overlooked by so many, though it is really practical because if you look at it from the side, you can see the sapphire crystal on top is slightly curved. This curve magnifies the dial without adding to the actual size or contorting the dial itself in any way, something you might see on other watches sometimes. And lastly, let me show you the strap on this. And just so you know, there's also a steel bracelet option for this watch, but I want to focus on a special rubber strap. It is incredibly comfortable and in a way also breathable because Omega included these little ventilation bumps so it lifts up from your skin. They also added some very interesting details to, you know, fancy up the look, like the white contrast stitching or this woven pattern running down the middle of it. All in all, this world timer really does stand out to me, not only within the Omega lineup, but also within the entirety of world time watches out there right now. Though the arrangement on the style isn't something we haven't seen before in a way, Omega really made it their own. And I like how you can see that this is a modern watch that can display an actual world map without having it look, you know, weirdly out of place or too old fashioned or maybe a bit cheesy. And that is also the reason why I can see so many different people or outfits being able to super easily pull this watch off. It is also a really competitive watch given the price and what you get for it. Here in Germany where I live, you could get this watch for about 8,700 or around about 10,000 US dollars, which is incredibly given the level of detail and complications you get here. And I'm sure there's even a bit of room for a price negotiation too. The only two drawbacks would be the size. I mean, it is something you mostly have to accept given the movement and what it has to do and perhaps the crown that could get annoying at times, but other than that, I can totally see how this world timer from Omega is going to be a future classic considering all things. But that's all for me. Now let me hear from you what you think about this Omega Seamaster Aquaterra world timer in the comments down below. And as always, if you have enjoyed this video, you can give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And if you want to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to my channel and I will see you in my next one. Bye.